Hi, my name is Anson Banks, and I teach jazz trumpet here at the University of Louisville. I've been teaching here since 2006, and this video's purpose is to share with all auditionees some of the things that I'm listening for uh, when you audition. And this is specifically for jazz trumpet and for jazz trombone. So there's a couple of things that I'm listening for, and I like to divide it into um, some specific instrumental things and specific jazz things. So I'll start with some of the brass things I'm listening for first. Um, one of the first things I'm always listening for is quality of sound. Evenness of sound throughout the register of your instrument and how uh, free or how open or how easily you produce your sound. Uh, that tells me a lot of things right off of the bat. Um, another thing that I'm listening for is a basic articulation and uh, how well you manage that throughout the range of the instrument. I'm also listening for intonation, but specifically I'm in listening for the ability to play in tune with oneself. Um, if one person is playing uh, flat, for example, but they're playing flat throughout the range of the instrument, that would be an example of playing in tune with yourself. Um, moving to the specific jazz things I'm listening for in a jazz audition, uh, the big things for me are time and phrasing. I'm listening to how you construct phrases, um, how those are uh, prototypical to classic jazz language, and I'm also listening to your unique interpretation of jazz phrases uh, as well. I'm listening for jazz articulations. Um, I'm really uh, into doodle tonguing personally, as well as other forms of jazz articulation. But I'm listening for an overall uh, understanding of that, or if you've begun to incorporate some of that in your playing. Uh, again, I'm also very interested in time, how well you feel time, and in your solos, and even when playing a melody, um, I can sense, or I think any a uh, professor can sense quickly uh, how deep your understanding of time is. So those are some basic things that I'm listening for in an audition that give me vital information as to exactly where you're at as far as your development goes for jazz trombone or jazz trumpet. Uh, during your audition process, I think it's important for you to know that I'm not um, judging you in some um, strict way for how many notes you might have missed or if you have uh, uh, fluffy articulations or something along those lines. Uh, auditions can be very stressful and um, those sorts of things occur uh, very frequently in a lot of auditions. Um, if you can play with good time and you can play with good intonation and uh, demonstrate a reasonable amount of um, jazz phrasing. These are key things that I'm listening for, and they tell me a lot about um, where you're at in your development of playing, and um, they're very helpful uh, bits of information for me. And again, I think it's just important for you all to know that um, nerves are a very common thing in auditions, and you may get a frack or a miss note here and there. And um, myself personally now, I'm not judging that as strictly as uh, an auditionee might think. You see, I think students after attending school, they want to be flexible and they want to be adaptable to all the different types of musical styles they'll find themselves in. And I feel that our program and our course offerings do exactly that. We have a number of rep ensembles here that uh, focus on various uh, musical styles like Brazilian jazz or contemporary jazz or hard bop jazz and a number of other course offerings and ensemble offerings that make you very diverse. And in this uh, day and age, I feel it's very important to be as diverse as possible to find, because um, you might find yourself in a number of different playing uh, situations which um, come out of jazz but might be something very different. And um, again, the, the classes and the uh, ensembles that we offer prepare you for that in an exceptional way. 
So again, this is uh, Dr. Anson Banks with the University of Louisville, uh, professor of jazz trumpet and jazz trombone, and uh, I hope to see you soon at one of our auditions. Thanks. Here's an example of a jazz trombone audition. graduated high school I knew that I wanted to continue playing classical and jazz trombone and not let one go by the wayside and um, I also knew that I loved to teach so uh, I was looking at some schools in West Virginia and Louisville really wasn't on the map for me at all until a friend of mine recommended it to me and uh, I took a drive up here and uh, I got a lesson with Anson Banks and Brett Schuster and that was it for me and I really loved it and so here I am. I'm really glad that I came here uh, and I think that I was pushed in the right amount that I needed to be and there was a lot, I was fortunate enough to meet a lot of great musicians that were still in college when I was a freshman and uh, it allowed me to get out on the scene and play with them and that's really the best thing to do is just immerse yourself in players that are better than you and uh, because I came here, I got to go to Brazil, I got to go to Switzerland, and um, experience a lot of different things. I was definitely pretty nervous for my audition. I think that's common, and, you know, that's not really a problem. Um, the most important thing is that you have some kind of focus when you go into the room. And once you meet all the professors that are, are going to be in there with you, um, you kind of calm down a little bit. Because really deep down, they're all warm kind of guys. And... Uh, and also, once you start playing with that rhythm section, uh, at least I was kind of blown away um, when they started playing. And I think I was—I think my first tune was "All the Things You Are," and it was just automatically I kind of settled into a zone. And you really just have to think about the music and not think about other things that don't matter in the moment. I'll graduate from here pretty soon with a degree in music education with jazz emphasis, and. Um, Although I love to teach, I also love to play, so I think I'm going to pursue a, a master's degree in jazz performance. And um, I know that at some point I want to teach in some capacity. I'm just not sure what level or, or for how long, but uh, I, I definitely want my two loves of playing music and teaching to be combined in some way. I, I do feel like I'm prepared for this next step um, in my life. and. I think that's a kind of a combination of two things. It's a combination of, of my own personal drive, and I think that's really essential. I, I knew that I, this is what I wanted to do before I even got here. And, and secondly, from the people that I met here, really kind of solidified that drive for me. Um, people like my trombone professor, Brett Schuster, Anson Banks, Chris Fitzgerald, people like that that really 
pushed me forward and helped me get out into the scene and yeah. Um, I think you have to do some soul searching and I know that sounds kind of vague but uh, you know I think you know you can take a drive by yourself sometime and just if you have a car if you have the capability and just really you know soak in the environment and think about what what you really love to do and it's also kind of important to separate yourself from you can have influences in your life but separate yourself from from other people when you're trying to make this decision because it's really just about you and if you get to the point where you're starting college and you've chosen a major and you're not 100% sure that it's really for you it's okay there's no reason to freak out about that you have some time to think about it and college is really where you start to grow up and you realize even more about yourself.